Ladies and gentlemen, you are now entering the Decent Christian Talk podcast. Enjoy. Decent Christian Talk episode number 111. Hey everybody, I'm Gabe Jones. I'm Josiah. And we are back. Yeah, we are. This is a show by the fans. For the fans. And we are so glad to be back. We missed you guys. It's been a weird year, but we are back and we're happy to be back. And it's because of you that we're back. Also, we have new content. We do. We We do. We do. We have Young Oceans on the show today, a great artist, great band that's been a, been around for a little bit. They've been, actually been on the show before, so this is a this is a return episode, a sequel, if you will. If you'd like to listen to the previous episode, you can. Yes. Back in the archives. You can check that out back in the archives, and you can also check them out wherever you listen to music, and as a matter of fact... As you will hear in the interview, they just released a single this past weekend called Light of Your Love. Also, you do not have to listen to the first episode to understand the second episode. It's not like a... Yeah, it's not one of those. Yeah, so... Thankfully. But yeah, as I alluded to earlier, before we head into the interview, we're back because of you. We had some technical difficulties due to... Well, my computer died. Yeah. So <laughs> it's hard to edit a podcast without a computer. And because of your Patreon support, we were able to upgrade and get another computer. Thank you very much. So that is that right there is proof that we are here because of you. And if you want to join our team and can help us continue on, we are... We would be thrilled to have you. You can you can uh, support our show at patreon.com forward slash decent Christian talk. And you can do it for as low as a dollar a month. Every cent counts. It does. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support that we've gotten. It's literally kept us running. We wouldn't we would not be having a show right now. You wouldn't be able to listen to us right now without our supporters. And you can do it for low as low as a a dollar a month. What do they say? That's like, that's that's as much as one gulp of Starbucks coffee. Ooh. Or maybe a McChicken sandwich. Yeah. Which could also There's make There's not you... a whole lot on the dollar menu anymore, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like a dollar and 19 cents now. Taco Bell used to have a killer dollar menu, and it's pretty much gone. They got rid of the Beefy Crunch Burrito, and I haven't gone back ever yeah. since. Don't want to talk about it. Anyway, uh... Thank you again, guys. It means a lot to us. It really does. I'm not just saying that. It means a lot. Um, Young Oceans. Yeah, they have been a a band for a while. And they've been kind of one of those bands that I kind of always go to when it comes to worship music. They're one of my favorite bands to listen to when I'm like wanting some quiet time, you know. And I'm excited to, to have them on the show again today. And I'm excited to bring to you the show. You know, it's interesting. You know, I was thinking, man, it's kind of weird to like release worship album, you know, because, you know, these albums are created for like people to come together to sing. And it's kind of weird to do in 2020. I mean, you can't really do that. I mean, you can, but it's kind of frowned upon. Yeah. So So we talked about that in in the interview and I was... Really interested to get his take on that. But without further ado, here is our interview with Young Oceans. All right, hit that horn, babe. Let's dance. So it's 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 been it's been a weird year because <laughs> I mean that's that goes without saying but 
when um, I'm always curious the approach of people like you when it comes to making music especially worship music that a lot of times when you're writing these songs you're wanting them to be written specifically in a corporate you know church gathering setting so mm -hmm. so <laughs> this year that has been a challenge because of everything um hmm. yeah what is what has been your approach i mean has that been in the back of your mind as you're creating this or, or has that changed your approach at all i mean what, what has that experience been like for you this year uh well the new record that we have that we have coming out really soon um you know it's funny music and i guess every creative venture just takes so much longer than you kind of want it to or hope it would um we started recording me and, and the rest of the players started making this record back in april which now seems like forever ago um, but the songs themselves really were written at this point now over a year ago um or you know they were from last year back when the world was normal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean no, like the, these songs that are that are captured on this record were written for a corporate setting, and in some cases were kind of tied, tried and tested in, in some church settings, which is great. Um, so I've been focusing on the record this year, and and I when I'm when I'm recording, when I'm like deep in a recording project, I don't write, so um, I actually haven't had that challenge come up just yet about um, what it's going to feel like, but. It'll be fine because no corporate music works unless unless it's true to the individual. Hmm. That's that's so true. Has the experience? Uh, I know. So you said writing it hasn't been any different. How about the recording part? That turned out to be very different. Yeah. So um, we had planned to to do much more of like a live, maybe kind of more of a raw. Uh, recording up in New York where we usually record. I live in Nashville now, but the rest of the band is in New York and um, or kind of is. Um, and we were supposed supposed to go into a studio for a week or two in in April, and that obviously got um, nixed because, of course, New York was was hit really hard and was locked down very early. Um, so it just was not in the cards. <laughs> so. Instead of, and I'm really glad um, we didn't just say, ah, well, let's just wait, because at this point, who knows when, you know, it's going to make sense to even do that kind of stuff anytime soon to travel around, or at least I don't feel like I'm ready to travel yet. Um, so we ended up making the record in a really weird way. Um, we started with the vocals here in Nashville, me and the other female vocalist, and we laid down our vocals songs of course were written and I had the forms in mind um, exactly how I wanted them but we laid down just our voices to like a click track um, and a you know a pad like a keyboard pad for pitch um, and sent that to the drummer and then once he sent me his parts I compiled that sent it to the bass player and electric guitar player and cellist so the whole thing was built um, in this back and forth style which was really really different for us um and it made for a really challenging process but it also probably it caused us to make decisions that we definitely wouldn't have made if we were all sitting together in a room so it was cool uh it, it definitely made for a unique record how has it been to be in nashville throughout this when you have so many artists that are depending on you know, people being together, kind of not mm -hmm. not even necessarily in a church setting, but still people being together. Yeah. How, how has that experience been for you? Yeah, at first, it, I think everyone was, was feeling pretty, pretty alone, you know, like, just like everybody in, in, in the world, there was for the first six weeks, it was pretty isolating. And then, you know, I, for me, I can just speak to just my, you know, little group of, of friends and people that I tend to collaborate with here um you just you kind of just got to use your judgment and 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 sort of venture out a little bit but um the folks that i eventually did start getting in a room with and doing some like some live stuff or some church podcast or just some live taping stuff that we've done for young oceans 
I just have to, we just have to trust one another that we've been careful, you know, um, and that we're healthy. <laughs> um, it takes it takes a it you know it takes risk to do to to step outside your door, you know, um, no matter what you're doing, especially if you're singing into a room and s spitting all over the place, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, you, you talked a little bit about just kind of the feeling of isolation and and feeling alone and I, I know that a lot of people have experienced that and i think that's why your first single you are not far was was kind of the perfect way to to start kind of introduce this album um was that originally your idea to the for this to be the first single or was this just hey this is perfect for this time um what was the, the thinking about releasing that song first and what does that song mean to you mm. well thanks for bringing that up man i'm glad you I'm glad you listened to it and yeah that is the first that is the first track on the album and um it's i really look at that i love i love the idea of like an album being a concept and being an arc and a story um and so it really is is kind of the invocation to to the rest of the the album um and I mean, when you when you pick a single, when you pick the first single, you know, to lead with, it's it's really a tough decision. But you just kind of got to like go with your gut and not overthink it. And I had played it for a handful of friends and people that knew the project, and even my family. And that was one that people were like, it kind of perked people up, and the response was similar. It was like, oh, that's different, or that's immediate, or that 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 gets me right away. And I love the fact that it's really only, it's just a little over two minutes long, um, which is usually not how we do it. We usually play play music <laughs> for way too long. Um, so it's just this short little blip. And, and yeah, I, I know that I need to be reminded of that that simple and profound idea every day that, that God is, is not far from us, you know. Um, and But that is our life's work to continue daily to turn and remember what he said so so when you were when you were going through those first few weeks to did you find yourself like i know a lot of people when they write music that it ends up becoming like a therapeutic experience for them because they are they're writing kind of what's on their heart at the time but since you wrote this before all this started was this able to minister to you in a way uh that maybe any of your music hadn't before yeah that's a cool question uh honestly man like the songwriting for me is a is a real devotional practice anyway and and i i've i've spent years trying to write songs and you know not just worship music but before i was doing this i was trying to write rock music or pop or whatever you want to call it it's playing in bands and trying to write true music you know and but but specifically writing scripture based worship music um is really is really a work of devotion and and it and it requires it really re requires a lot of discipline for me i've learned that um i can't just i can't just sort of like go to bed late and you know hop into my into my workspace and just expect something to pop into my head i have to like really like discipline my body and my rhythm and my week when i'm in that process because my prayer is always when i'm writing um my prayer is always lord what would you have us sing and mm. i know that seems kind of weird um but i really think that like no matter no matter if you're leading a community of 12 people you know in your home or even just leading your family you know in in a song like it's it's a sacred idea uh, to put words into people's mouths so i take it really seriously um mm -hmm. and what i often find is is only after the fact sometimes after it's been recorded sometimes after i really hear like someone else sing the song i i tend to have this kind of like wake up moment where where the full weight of that idea hits me and that's a really cool experience because it makes me realize that maybe maybe my prayer was answered maybe this is actually kind of a, a gift that i was able to receive and it and and i get to experience it um on the back end you know because 
because I think if God gives someone a song, um, that person can't claim it as their own, you know, so to speak. Hmm. So yeah, there's there's a lot of surprises after the fact for me. I find that that the group of songs that I've been kind of working on and marinating in tends to be my mantra for that season, you know. So I'm really grateful for for these new songs, and I'm really excited for people to to dive into them as well. You said that um, this album has a, has a has a, I mean. You, you like the idea of an, an album fitting together and being a concept. What what is a what are some fundamental themes and, and concept to, that this that you hope this album kind of brings through? The biggest difference between this this album and really like our the, well the last the last full length we did was called Suddenly. That was very much a concept record in my mind. I don't know how much it communicated once once people heard it, but like in my mind it was. In fact, we had the order. I had the order for that record before we even went and recorded it, which was kind of a different way to approach it. And that was a very liturgical idea. It was really sort of grabbing onto ancient sort of church uh, worship kind of, uh, ideas, and you know, making making those kind of prayers in my own way. Um, now this one is very different in that it's really just a collection of of super simple almost like childlike prayers of intimacy uh th these are these are the maybe the the simplest and most terse lyrics that i've ever written um which is which is really scary and vulnerable and but it feels really right for the moment um it, it's it's um I would say maybe the theme throughout is intimacy on this one, mm. which is pretty different from what we've done in the past. And that's that's an interesting concept when you think about what what people are going through and and probably craving right now. Yeah. Um, so th that I think that's a a great message. Um, another track that I I got to listen to that, that that's coming out later this year is called uh, Heaven All Around. Hmm. And 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 for me, it, it's a song. When I listen to it, it, it's a song about hope. And there's a lot of people right now that are they probably don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They maybe they've been having to stay home. Um, hmm. You know, maybe they lost their jobs. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of bad stuff going on. Yeah. Um, what do you hope that this song, which is kind of what the title, it's kind of the title track of the album. Um, what what do you what do you hope that this song brings forth and and how was it writing this song? Uh, the song "Heaven All Around." Yeah, yeah, that was that was um that was a cool one to write. It's it's taken taken straight from John's vision of of you know New Jerusalem coming down from heaven and when we when you, when you sing when you like create poetry around the, those those revelation kind of ideas or the, the the finality ideas it can be it can be a little daunting i have to admit but what we have to what i what i try to remember is like this especially you know we we all know hymns and modern songs that take imagery from the book of revelation for instance um and even like even though we've been told a million times not to do this it can be really tempting to be super super literal with some of that imagery whereas uh, we know that that john you know on the island of patmos is he's he's in the spirit is what it says he's he's like in some kind of some kind of spirit dream state that's that's more real maybe than this reality but still he's doing his best with those descriptions to kind of describe what his mind's eye is seeing you know, and 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 you know it's tough so i definitely approach a song like heaven all around with with a lot of um care but essentially it's just it's just jesus what happens when the presence of jesus whether in this current in-between state now today in 2020 or at some point tomorrow or a million years from now when he comes back in full glory we have access even in the in-between to sort of taste that right um mm -hmm. to taste the 
the very presence of, of Jesus. He said, I will be with you to the end of the age, you know. And and certainly when he comes to the end of the age, he will be with us and there will be no denying it. And there will be no denying it from anyone's standpoint, a believer or not. And that's kind of what, what that passage is about. But but it really, it's, it's this idea of like pulling the future into now, right? And, and saying, mm-hmm. if if we can believe that Jesus is present as he says he is, we have absolutely nothing to fear in the next moment or the next day or the next era. So it's a dreamy idea, um, and a lot of people scoff at dreamy ideas, but I think I think it's the very best thing about the gospel is that it is indeed good news. Mm, that's that's awesome. Um, you know, I think that song is going to give people a lot of hope um, to, to look for that future. Thanks, man. Um, and I really appreciated that. Um, there's another song. Um, let me make sure I got it right. Um, I believe it's called Light of Your Love. Is that right? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, and that song, you know, it's another kind of, you know, it talks, it talks about kind of the beginnings, if you will. When we talk about heaven all around, it's kind of our future. And and, mm. and, and this song is kind of about the beginnings, and, and it talks cool about um even from the beginning you know we're not alone and i think that it's also important to look back on on that as well as looking ahead what was what was it like writing writing that song man well thanks thanks so much for this this great insight i'm so glad that you listened to the tunes first of all um so yeah that song is actually coming out this friday which i'm super uh excited about um light of you love was written um, f- for a community that I that I, that I kind of help out with a lot in New York, a church community up there, and and we we had been encouraged by the music director to to essentially um, show instead of tell with our lyrics, <laughs> mm. right? This and and um, like to just to just say it to just say it without any veneer, without any hiding. Um, and and so, I think, how does that song start? In light of your love, my heart is your home, never abandoned, never alone. So right, right, out, right out of the gates, it's, it's a child, it's us speaking to their creator. And, and it's our spirit communing with the spirit of God, which is to say, reminding ourselves who we are that we are children you know and i have three kids like when you watch a child in a healthy environment you know in in when they're fed and clothed and taken care of they literally there's nothing in the world that that is bothersome to them or or, or fearful to them um and that is our um inheritance you know, mm. even as adults. And so um, I think it's a phrase that I, I read. Um, light of your presence, of course, is all over the Psalms. In Psalm 90, you know, light of your presence. But the phrase light of your love, I think was I found in uh, a Jesus Calling devotional. I don't know if you know that. Um, I can't remember her name right now. Sarah something who's amazing. But it's just another way of, of phrasing like, um, this idea of, of the kind of heavenly gaze of the Father um, upon us. And it's all over the Psalms that if we, would, if we would sort of expose ourselves and lift our eyes to Him, you know, allow the light to kind of come over us and warm us, everything's changed in an instant. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for that one. Um, I think that's a really singable song for communities as well. I hope... I hope it'll be something that maybe people will find useful for their repertoire. I kind of hate to ask about the future after this album, but but it, it it intrigued me when you said that you kind of thought about recording this album originally live. Do you have any plans on maybe eventually doing that? Um, yeah, in some sense, like we we actually we did a series, um, really really simple and scrappy series of recordings we, we picked six off of this record 
um you might have seen we did it we put out the you are not far like acoustic live version it's just a really like press record let's go don't try to make it fancy um literally one camera in the room which was really fun um we did that for six of the tunes so we've tackled that in some sense except they're still really new and 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 we're also like a new record like you have to kind of learn how to play the songs and without being able to tour it's hard to really like learn them um but one one thing that we've talked about a lot um is uh doing something called voices volume two several years ago we put out something called voices mm. volume one which is, yeah and that was great thanks man um and that was if, if people don't know it's it was a collection of songs from the full lengths or the records that we had done to that point but um recorded in a different way more of like in a more of an accessible kind of production um, and sung by a bunch of other singers, not me, which was really great. Um, and it was just, it, that's why it's called Voices. It's just a bunch of different features of um, some amazing other singers and worship leaders in, in the U.S. So I hope to do that again and this time have a whole new cast, maybe some similar voices, but maybe a whole, no, a whole new cast of voices that, that we've not worked with. Um, and my my desire for that would be to do a much more intimate and stripped down record um, where it's not trying to be huge, um, but where it's really, really kind of small and, and um, intimate. So hopefully a voice is valued too sometime in 2021. You are not far when I open up my eyes to see. You're drawing every breath, compelling every heart to be. You are not far, but you are not so far. That was our interview with Young Oceans. I'd really like to thank Eric for coming on the show and talking with us during this really bizarre time in our history. And again, you can check out their latest single. It just came out this past weekend. It's called You Are Not Far. It's a really, really great song. And you're going to want to keep on checking them out because they are going to be releasing some singles in the coming months that is going to lead to their new album that comes out in january and that album is called you are fullness so you know just because the christmas season is coming you know a lot of times people stop releasing music around christmas season unless it's christmas music that's not the case with young oceans they're going to be releasing some new stuff throughout the holiday season so be checking that out and um if you're like, ah, I don't really like worship music, I feel you. Like, I'm not I'm not someone that usually, I'm not like, okay, I'm going to listen to worship music. Young Oceans for me is, is, a, is a little bit different. I, I've just always felt connected with them. Um, so I just ch I challenge you to check that out and give them a listen. Give them a chance. A lot of you may have never heard of Young Oceans, but then if uh, you were to name a couple songs, you might... You say, oh, yeah, I know that song. We sing that at church on Sunday. Yeah. So uh, they do have some pretty well-known songs Yeah, that and, you might not even realize that you know. And I'm excited that he ta we talked a little bit about the in the interview about his wanting to do a second volume of Voices. Uh, volume Voices 1 that released in 2016 for them was one of my favorites. He... he uh, he enlisted some artists such as Leland and All Sons and Daughters and Elio Holcomb and Mike Donahue and pretty much they covered his songs and they put it on an album and they made it more corporate friendly, I guess would be the term, easier for the band to play, if you will. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna he's looking into doing that again in the future, so check that out when that happens. I'm excited. What else are you excited about? You, you, I am excited about the future, and it's hard to believe 
but we're like two months away from our annual year end show. It is indeed. I've already, I've already, I'm not going to lie to you. I've already compiled, I'm starting to compile a list. I have like 35 albums that I wrote down. Wow. In the last week. I have undoubtedly, I've got my eyes on one song for song of the year. And then there's... You've only listened to one song? No, there's just one song that has risen above the rest. Okay. It's song of the year. And then I'll need, I'll need to start compiling a list of albums. I am excited. I've given you at least one suggestion time and time again. Yes, I listened to it just this morning. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to break we'll your heart, but it we'll might not see. make my list for best albums of the year. Oh, uh, well, I guess there's the right way and the wrong way to go about <laughs> things. Anyway, um, I'm excited about that. That's coming in about two months, probably middle of December, so you can be looking for that. And hey, give us some suggestions. We're always, we're always interested in, hey... Check this album out. Uh, make sure it's not bad. I mean, if you give us a bad suggestion, we'll just never listen to you again. Yeah. So anyway, I can't wait. It's in two months. It's one of our favorite episodes of the year, and it's com- it'll be here before we know it. How about that? It's hard to believe 2020 is almost over, and most people would be happy about that. I can't believe it's been almost a year since both The Devil Wears Prada and Norma Jean released an album and norma jean's album is probably my most listened to album this year from last year it's it's weird when those those late releases end up becoming like the next year's favorite album yeah that that's definitely my favorite album this year so far yeah it's always like after halloween anything that comes out it's it's hard to gauge or even like after labor day sometimes um yeah so that is the end of the show we would like to thank all our supporters on patreon that's patreon.com for slash decent christian talk once again you can be a sponsor and i i i was uh remiss to just i forgot to say that our bonus episode which you can get through patreon oh yeah we're gonna be talking about an album that just turned 20 years old that's incredible it's called loud and clear and it's by the oc supertones if you do not know about the OC Supertones, why? I can't believe it's 20 years old. That's crazy. Ska music. Ska music, it's still here in various ways. Five Iron Frenzy is around, I guess. Unfortunately for everybody. Anyway, um, yeah, you can check us out on Patreon uh, where you can get bonus, exclusive bonus shows. Uh, we are also on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and we're now on a new platform called Amazon Music. Interesting. I think it's called Amazon Music. I don't know. Anyway, it's hard it, for me to keep up. It was it was uh it was Google Play and now it's Amazon. I don't know. Somebody bought somebody out and so now we're on Amazon and we might be getting on like Audible soon in the future. Uh, you know, the, like the audiobook. Yeah, I, I'm, I was, I, I was like, I, I didn't know if we had to, to read or something. I don't know how that. No, they read to you. You don't have to do anything. Oh well, yeah, it's it'll be the same show. It's just anyway. We're also on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Decent Christian Talk and the Decent Christian Talk podcast discussion page. Uh, we've well, we've loved hearing from you and staying connected with you the last month or so while we've been off. Uh, we're also on Twitter, DC Talk Act 2, and Instagram, DC Talk Podcast. And, of course, you can check us out at DecentChristianTalk.com. We're still there. The internet is still there. But, uh, yeah. Hey, guys. We'll check you next time. Don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. Thanks. Don't forget to... Uh... Tip your waiters and waitresses, thanks.